I'm getting the console ready. Can you make snacks? Thanks. Mm -hmm. I'll get it. <laughs> Mr. Anderson? Jordan, get out. Get out and never come out again. Why not? What's going on? It's for your own safety. Leave. Charlie, stop it. If you tell her, I'm not going to take you anywhere ever again. If you throw that vase, I'm going to have you locked away. Exactly one month since Charlie disappeared. Let me check the comments on my YouTube video. Brandon is innocent. You're not a detective? What? There's more to Charlie's case than you think. You know what? Uh, I'm gonna make a video diary. Charlie's Disappearance, season two, I guess. Now, where's my camera? Oh, there it is. Hey guys, it's Tyler Prince here, back for Charlie's Disappearance, season two. And a lot of you have been commenting about how, um, there's more to Charlie's story than I originally uh, touched on in season one. So I thought I was going to interview some people, some more people to know more about Charlie and if Brandon was just the killer or if there was more. So, up, oh, okay. I think I have the five people I'm going to interview. Person number one is Charlie's best friend, Jordan Unis. Person number two is the girl Charlie used to bully, Charlotte McAdams. Person number three is Charlie's sister, Donna Squash. Person number four is Charlie's neighbor on his other side, so Beth Amy, Charlie Squash, and then Olive Oil. And then, lastly, one of my and me and Charlie and I's classmates, um amanda lynn so yeah i'm gonna um um check in with jordan and we're gonna get the, to the first interview so let's go hey jordan it's me again can i ask you some more questions about um charlie of course you can i'm an open book speaking okay. of open book would you like to join my book club this saturday uh I can hold family-friendly discounts, if you know what I mean. Uh, no thanks. I just want to ask you the questions. Okay. So, the first question is, what did you first think of Charlie when you first met him versus now? Well, my goodness, there's so much good things about Charlie. He's shy, but at the same time, he's smart and ambitious when he's around me. He's like my best friend. But, I mean, what's your opinion on him? Exactly that. He's such a kind person, and he just needs to jump out of his shell some more. You know what I mean? I just wish that he would maybe be more open to things. I mean, he always was, but something changed. He's still such a sweet person in his heart, and I know that he'll find that glow that he always used to have. Aw, that's really sweet, Jordan. Aw, thank you. I know, right? I've been doing these things called affirmations every single morning, and it really boosts my self-esteem. I think you should do it, too, so, you know, you're not as shy around people, and maybe that can boost your confidence, too. I heard it works for 
everybody in the whole entire world. It's actually so motivating. You should really try it. And so should Charlie. And so should my mom. And so should his mom. And maybe even his grandmother. Maybe the whole world. Um, Isn't Jordan, so cool? thanks can for the backhanded compliment, but can we go back to the questions? Oh, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. And what was your reaction to Charlie being pronounced missing? Missing? I was stunned. I never thought that Charlie would go missing. He's the type of guy who's so quiet around other people, of course, not me, that he doesn't get into any trouble, let alone go missing. I was scared. I was genuinely scared for him. But at the same time, I was just so stunned that I couldn't even feel fear. It was like a surprise. So it's a big surprise that put me in this state of mind where I just can't feel fear. It's crazy. It's like, it's like a mind illusion. It's insane. I was thinking that maybe it was just some joke, some rumor, some gossip that people like to spread. But when I heard it was on the news, I flipped. Charlie missing. That was such a good headline. It was insane. I never thought that Charlie, Charlie Squash would ever go on the news, let alone ever be labeled as missing. It's baffling, yet so mind-blowing. You know what I mean? You know when you just have that that urge to just learn more? That's how I felt when I heard that Charlie went missing. Charlie Squash went missing. Missing. Of course, I was scared for him and, you know, nervous, but I was also so excited to learn more, to know more, to be like Sherlock Holmes of this small little town. Don't you see it? Jordan figures out where Charlie Squash went. That would be such a good headline. But yes, I I feel sad for him. Very sad and excited and sad and nervous and so many emotions so many emotions i just can't can't figure it out cool what was the question uh well we'll just move on to the next question oh okay um do you know anything in his life that was strange or abnormal strange abnormal do those words even exist in Charlie Squash's life? Um, no. The boy lives under a rock. I mean, now. He's missing, so, you know, he's not under his rock. But, but that's fine. But it's not. Because his rock is his home. And his home is where he feels safe. And if he's not safe, who knows what he'll do. Jordan, yeah. Jordan. Uh... Yeah. Can you calm down, maybe take some deep breaths, and then you can continue? Okay. I'm smart. I am loved. You sure are, Jordan. Thank you. Okay. But back to what I was saying. Charlie's life is so boring. That is boringer than boring. It's boringer than boring. Poor dumb, if that makes sense. I mean, who would have thought a born child went missing? He's never done anything abnormal or strange except for maybe smiling or telling the teacher that that question is not right. Or telling the teacher that answer is not right. Or maybe even standing up in class and going up to the chalkboard and writing an answer down. I mean, now that is Charlie Squash, crazy. That is Charlie Squash, strange. Charlie Squash, abnormal. But he's never done anything, anything crazy, like like Jordan crazy. Maybe even worse than Jordan crazy. I wouldn't even think to go to Jordan crazy. I mean, Jordan crazy is like boom, chaka boom. Jordan crazy is like crazy, like out of this world. But but anyways, looking back 
on it, I do remember something strange. Something definitely not Charlie. Something worse than Jordan crazy. He lashed out at his mom. And when I mean lash out, I mean lash. I mean whip. I mean lash out. I mean cuckoo I mean, I never expected Charlie Squash to lash out at anybody, especially not his mom. And, and I don't mean lash out like a get upstairs, mom, make me breakfast, mom. Not the type of lash out where it's uh, knock on the door, mom. Come on, mom. This isn't fair, mom. No, I mean, I mean, get this. Now this is about to blow your little mind. And I mean little. Oh my god, just say it! Because you have a little... Oh, okay. He was cursing, <laughs> cursing to his mom, his mommy, his mama, his mother, his birth giver. The one who brought him into this world. He dared to say those vulgar words and I thought... My goodness, he's a changed man. I mean, a changed boy, because, you know, we're not to that puberty stage yet. But, you know, he is a changed little boy. Cursing? Was, that's, that's it? That's what I was saying. He only said it when I wasn't around. But, you know, I had to sneak my way like a little investigator, a little, a little dancer, my sneaks were so unheard that he barely knew I heard of those vulgar words, which I should be telling a trusted adult about. But I'm not a snitch. The snitches get stitches. And then they lie in ditches. What if Charlie snitched? What if Charlie has stitches and now he's in a ditch and that's why he's missing? Okay. But the things he said to his mom were Absurd. It wasn't even human. I mean, saying female dog is crazy, but saying the word that means female dog is even crazier. Saying duck is crazy, but saying the word that rhymes with it, crazy. Saying poop is insane, but saying the word that means it is crazy, oh my goodness. The rush of adrenaline, adrenaline that boy had. I mean, I don't know when he said it, I don't know why he said it, but the point is how he said it. Poor little Pee-wee Charlie now into a big grown-up because to say such vulgar words. But crazy Jordan would never let that rash out, not even, to the, not even to anybody who's mean to me, not even to my birth giver, oh my goodness. Jordan? Yeah? I, I think I have all that I need for today. Are you sure? Because I can give you more. I have a lot more. Like, what do you mean a lot nope. more? I mean, I am bustling with energy, and I am pouring out with the information, and I am longing. And I mean longing for something more. Just let me tell you something else. Let me tell you how he pooped on himself in the first grade and how everybody was laughing, but I stood up to them. Or let me tell you how he gave me his crayon and that's how we became best friends. Jordan. Let me tell you how he fell and tripped in recess and I picked him up and then I fell and then we were laughing and giggling and people were staring at us like we were monsters. Let me tell you. Jordan. So, much about Charlie. I have so much interest. Jordan! Since kindergarten. Since kindergarten. <laughs> Puzzling with information. I just want to know more. Jordan, I think this interview is long enough. I'm gonna go. Okay. Bye. Um, come Bye. to my book club. Uh, no thanks. Bye. Bye. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Not sorry. now, Jordan. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for taking your beloved time, and I'm sure you have much better things to do, but I remember something. Not kindergarten, not first grade, not second grade, not third, not fourth, not all the way up to where we are now. I remember. He whispered something to me. I'm not sure what, I'm not sure when, I'm not sure how, I'm not sure why, but I remember he said something. It was a bunch of commotion, a bunch of words, a bunch of 
whispering babbles. But I remember he said something very important. Which and was? if only I could remember it, I'd be able to give you more information about what happened. I just, I just don't remember. I'm sorry. Oh. Okay, well, I guess I'll be on my way then. Wait, 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 wait. What is it, Jordan? I know I speak a lot. And I know I took a lot of your time, but I'm telling you, I'm just as worried as you are. Promise me that you'll find him. Please, promise. Okay. Well, maybe if I spit out words to you, you'll remember? Yeah. Maybe Jordan will. Okay. Jordan will. Okay, so I'm going to start. Three, two, one. Baloney, apple, book, school. Yes, 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 I remember. That was the missing word. It was teacher, uh, 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 appreciation, um, week. Yes, yes, it was teacher appreciation week. I remember that's what he said to me. That's what he whispered to me on that day, teacher appreciation week. Are you getting this? Are you getting this, interviewer? Are you getting this moment in history when Jordan remembers something so special that could change the way the life works? I could find Charlie. I remember. Teacher appreciation week. I remember. Teacher appreciation week? Yes! Didn't I say that a thousand times, you fool? Teacher appreciation week. Ugh, never mind. I I have some I have um I have work to do. I'm I'm just gonna leave you alone. Um have a good day. Wait Yes Wait. I'm being serious. I know I'm not serious all the time, I'm a little goofy, but it is teacher appreciation week. That's what you whispered to me. It's a sign. I need you to think closer. I need you to think deeper. I need you to think. Use that tiny brain of yours and think of what teacher appreciation to indicate. Okay, I'll, I'll look more into it. I've got to go. Bye. No, you'll look more into it now. This is a missing child, and I just gave you some vital piece of information. Look more into it now. Fine. I'll, I mean, fine. I'll go home, and I'll look it up, okay? I think you promise. Should. And then you're going to come back with me to this information because I'm done. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, I did some research about Charlie like Jordan uh, asked, and I didn't really find anything. So I'm just going to move on to my interview with Charlotte McAdams. What did you think of Charlie when you first met him versus now? When I first met Charlie, he I thought he was nice, and I thought he wasn't like everybody else. Because everybody else in middle school would bully me and treat me like I was a human. I thought he was different. But now I realize he's like everybody else. No compassion, no morals, and no decent respect. What was your reaction to Charlie being pronounced missing? Well, the human decency in me 
felt bad for his family. I felt bad for those who loved him and for those he loved. But at the same time, I feel very happy that he's gone. I feel happy that I have one less burden to carry on my shoulder as I walk through middle school. I feel happy that I don't feel as bad as I would with him there. I feel happy I don't have to worry about him as I walk through the halls in my middle school. Do you know anything in his life that was strange or abnormal? I think Charlie himself was strange and abnormal because he honestly would perceive everybody as who their family is and what their family does. So if one person from their family is rude, he'll think everybody else is rude. Since Charlie's disappearance got a bit more budget from the first movie i finally got a cork board with pins and now i'm gonna pin uh some things up. so first thing i wrote down is jordan thinks charlie is normal when charlotte thinks charlie is strange the next thing i wrote is that beth amy is a rude teacher because in charlotte's appearance jordan says there's this really mean teacher named beth amy and and Charlotte said something in her interview about how he connects to the if his family is rude, then he's rude. And maybe that's why he's bullying her. Because Jordan also mentioned that they used to hang out in kindergarten and stuff. And then the se- and then the second th- and then the last thing I wrote is teacher appreciation. So let's pin these up on the board. Oh, and I have yarn too. Charlie's sister, Donna Squash. Are we, are we starting? Yup. Okay. What is your relationship with Charlie? I mean, our relationship was pretty good, but we got in a lot of fights, like, like dumb fights, like sibling fights. About I what? Mean, well, like, you know, sort of just like him stealing my snacks and stuff like that or taking my spot on the couch oh okay but other than that our relationship was pretty good like we were pretty close 
Okay. Um, what was your reaction to Charlie being pronounced missing? I mean, I was devastated. Not being able to see him anymore was the worst news I've ever heard. Do you know anything in his life that was strange or abnormal? Well, I remember this one time that he told me about when he was at mom's house. He said that he looked, he said that there was something interesting in our mom's fridge. Like, like really interesting. I don't really remember what it was, but I think it was like an animal part or something. But like a weird animal, you know? Yeah. It was sort of just shocking. Um, anything else? Um, well, I remember, I sort of remember the day he went missing, like, after school. I was waiting in line, like, the car line, for hours, and he didn't come outside. I remember telling my mom about it, and for some reason, she wasn't phased at all. Um, okay. Um, I think I have all the information I need. Bye. Okay, bye. So, after Donna's interview, I came up with two post-it notes. So, I have, what's in Eliza's fridge? I know Donna said a weird animal part, but that's just what she thinks. Because Charlie actually knows the answer, but since Charlie is dead, um, we can't ask him. So... And the next one is Eliza not phased about Charlie's missing. But I'm just going to crumple that up. Because I think that is because... um, I think that is because she thought he was at Jordan's house. But that's just an inference. So, yeah, I'm going to post this up on the board. Now, my next interview is with Olive Oil. What did you think of Charlie when you first met him versus now? Well, I didn't really know him that well because we were just lab partners. But his breath is really stunk. Um, okay. What was your reaction to Charlie being pronounced missing? I honestly didn't even notice until this interview. You didn't notice that he was absent for a whole month? No, I thought he was sick or something, and then I just kind of lost track. Okay. Do you know anything in his life that was strange or abnormal? Um, sometimes he would, like, stay alone or, like, be really quiet at lunch, and then he would have to leave sometimes. He never sat with Jordan at lunch? No, he just sat with me in the book club. He didn't even sit with Eric? No, he, Eric sat with the cool kids. Oh, okay. I think I have all the information I need. Thank you. Okay, so after all his interview, I have two things that I wrote down. I wrote, Charlie would sit alone at lunch, and all didn't realize his disappearance. So I'm going to post those on the board.
as you can see, I connected Charlie Woods alone next to Charlotte, thinking Charlie is strange, because that is strange that he wouldn't say with his best friend, even though he, I think he was a part of Jordan's book club, but whatever. Now I'm going to go on to my interview with Amanda Lynn. What did you think of Charlie when you first met him versus now? I think he was a really interesting guy. I mean, he was really smart, like, when we were working together. Um, he had a lot of interesting ideas and stuff, I guess. Okay. What was your reaction to Charlie being pronounced missing? I was so surprised, because, like, I never expected, like, a guy like him to die. I wonder who killed him. Yep, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Uh, do you know anything in his life that was strange or abnormal? Not that I know was. Okay, I think I have all the information I need. I'm sorry for what's going to happen to you tomorrow. What's going to happen... Tomorrow. So, after that weird interview, I wrote down a couple things. I wrote down Amanda was shocked that Charlie went missing, and so was Jordan. Amanda wondered who killed him, so she kind of wanted to be like the detective. So did Jordan. Amanda thought Charlie was normal, and so did Jordan. And I also wrote down what's happening tomorrow. I'm going to put this all on my cork board. Detective Tyler Prince pronounced history teacher Brandon Anderson responsible for the murder of Charlie Squash. In his criminal statement, Anderson claims he heard that Squash threatened to kill fellow classmate Charlotte McAdams four years ago in the year 2020. He claims he had an affair with Squash's mom, Eliza Beth, five years ago in the year 2019, and waited until she is super trusting of him so he could put poison in Charlie's in Squash's water one year ago in the year 2023. Unfortunately for him, Squash's sister, Donna Squash, caught him. She promised not to tell the police if Anderson bought her Louis Vuitton and Gucci items. Of course, Anderson agreed. But I believe there's more to the story. Here's why. In McAdams' diary entry on September 16th, 2019, she claims that Squash was failing horribly. So Anderson assigned McAdams her first homework assignment, which was tutoring Squash. Then when McAdams got her first boyfriend, Eric Brickinson, and Squash started making comments about how McAdams was too ugly for Brickinson or how she was too nerdy to be with him, an inference to why Squash was making these rude remarks was because he was upset with his own life and his relationship with his mother. According to Squash's best friend, Jordan Unis, Squash had a weird relationship with Beth. Unis says that on May 1st, 2024, Beth yelled at her to leave and never come back. When she left, she eavesdropped on the family and Squash, and saw Squash throwing things and Beth telling him to stop. Uh, the next day, on May 2nd, 2024, Unis claims she saw Squash sitting on the front porch of his... Uh, the on the front of his porch stairs. Um, she asked what was wrong and Squash gave no answer while Beth was staring at Unis through the window. When Unis was leaving, he said something under his breath, like he was trying to communicate something with her. 
When Unus got back to school that day, she claimed she saw Beth in the window again, talking to someone, but Squash wasn't sitting on the porch. According to the information I collected, I came up with the inference that Anderson was innocent. Squash was sick of his life. He hated his mother because she didn't like his friend. He hated his stepfather because no one knew about the affair, their affair. And he hated his sister because all she cares about is designer. He hated McAdams because he was upset with his own life. And he hated his life because everyone hated him. Squash committed suicide and Anderson took the blame to prove his love for Squash. Anderson would not hold a grudge for four years. Anderson actually loved Beth and would not use her just to get to squash. Anderson did not poison the drink because if you put poison in water, you'd be able to see it. I think Brandon Anderson is innocent and you should too. Charlie Squash committed suicide. Why does this sound so familiar? Tyler Prince. Stop. The grades are starting to drop. Please stop. Charlie committed suicide and that's the end of the story. Oh god. I need to make a video diary ASAP. Hello watchers. I have some more information. At my doorstep, I got the school paper. It says that Brandon Anderson is innocent. In the last film, he sent me a letter stating that Charlie Squash committed suicide and I should stop um, um, investigating or else he would fail me. According to this, uh, written by Amanda Lynn, she also states that Squash committed suicide. But she only says it in like a broad term. She doesn't say it like you should um, say he committed suicide so that you don't, so that I don't do this to you. She's just saying that Charlie Squash committed suicide and you should believe that. But, so that's not enough evidence to prove her murderer. But I'm going to prove that Amanda Lynn is the murderer. I believe Amanda Lynn murdered Charlie Squash as well as Brandon Anderson. I wrote down what's happening tomorrow. I already know what happened today. The newspaper. That's what she was referring to. I'm going to make an other post-it note saying... Amanda... Charlie suicide because she believes he committed suicide as well as me. I mean, what? He, she believes he committed suicide as well as Brandon Anderson did. I'm also gonna write down uh, Amanda murder question mark because. Oh, okay. <coughs> I believe she murdered him. And Amanda Lynn Brandon Anderson and Charlie Watch. We're all a part of Newspaper Club. Newspaper Club. I'm going to add these to the cork board and I'm going to figure, I'm going to prove that Amanda Lynn killed Charlie Squash as well as Brenda Anderson.
be such a good headline. Headline. Be like Sherlock Holmes. I was thinking that maybe it was just some joke, some rumor, some gossip that people like to spread. But when I heard it was on the news, I flipped. Charlie missing. That was such a good headline. It was insane. How did Jordan know so much? guys i found another newspaper and it's about teacher appreciation and jordan said that charlie whispered to himself teacher appreciation and it came out a week after he went missing on may 7th 2024 i don't know if what jordan was telling me was true and she was trying to help me because she's not the murderer or she's trying to lead me into a trap because she is the murderer i'm gonna read it though today is teacher appreciation day at hor uh Woodstock Middle School. This news article is dedicated to all the wonderful teachers of our school. Each bullet point below will be a direct citation from our students about our teachers. Miss Stake, sixth grade English teacher. I love Miss Stake because she helped me learn how to write an essay. Now I write them all the time. Barb Dwyer. Mr. Baker, sixth grade math teacher. He helped me learn PEMDAS. Doug Graves, Miss Vader, seventh grade science teacher. Thanks, Miss Vader. Eric Brickinson, Mr. Anderson, seventh grade history teacher. I love Mr. Anderson because he always makes sure I do my absolute best on all my schoolwork and homework. I could go on and on about him, but the one thing I love most about him is that he's kind to all of his students. Thanks, Mr. Anderson. Charlotte McAdams. Well, that was before she found out he was a murderer. Mr. Hoff, 8th grade art teacher. I love Mr. Hoff be because he showed me that art is an art form. Lee King. Mr. Hawking, 8th grade science teacher. Mr. Hawking is the best. I love how he taught us not to liquid. liquid. He helps me get into the science solid college I want. He saved my gas. Ophelia Payne. Uh, a special thanks to our wonderful teachers. Another special thanks to Barb Dwyer, Doug Graves, Eric Brickinson, Charlotte McAdams, Lee King, and Ophelia Payne for your thoughts on our lovely teachers. Don't forget to check out last week's article all about Charlie Squash. There's a missing poster. But the article that came out the week before this was not about Charlie Squash. I'm gonna do some investigating. <sighs> no luck finding it. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I have to break into Amanda's house and s find that newspaper first I need to study her route every day since her house is over here she goes here 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 and then here 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 and then back here 
if it takes her a minute to get to every house, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 23 houses. I have approximately 23 minutes to find that newspaper. And I'm right near the NYPD office, so I've got to wait until the perfect time for to break in. I could do it when she's sleeping. Maybe I'll do that. And if I can't find it, then I'll do it when she's doing this. So I'll have 23 minutes. Sounds like a plan. Hey guys, so I found the newspaper, um, um, yeah, an unknown source gave it to me because, uh, they, uh, they saw the last episode of my web show and they wanted to give me a copy, so I'm gonna read it. It says, We Miss You Charlie Squash by Amanda Lynn. Yesterday, one of our fellow classmates, Charlie Squash, has been declared missing by the NYPD. Police officer Oliver James and First Squash ran away while police officer Isabella Artisan Francisco and First Squash was kidnapped. That sounds kind of weird because Oliver James said Squash was kidnapped and Isabella Artisan Francisco inferred that he ran away. Let me read on. Since the squash residence does not have a doorbell with a camera, no one can confirm. That will change, however, since squash's mother, Eliza Beth, put an order for one just this morning. They don't... The, the squash residence doesn't have a doorbell with a camera. For anyone looking for him, his height is 4 foot 11 inches, he is 13 years old, and he is wearing a green sweater and blue t-shirt with a dog design on it. He's also wearing jeans and white Converse shoes. If you have any information, call Beth at 736-486-9348 and return Squash to 83 Genship Avenue. The reward for his finding will be $10,000 cash. We all hope he ran away and will come back soon. Please send your prayers and be aware. You could save a life. The missing poster. So weird. Why did the date says May second? The date says May second, and Charlie disappeared May third. 
Amanda killed Charlie. But what about Jordan? I'm gonna get a call on with Jordan right away. State your name, age, and occupation. Well, my name, my name is Jordan Eunice. I'm 12 years old, and I'm a student. Did you kill Charlie with Amanda Lynn? Kill Charlie? You think I killed Charlie? My best friend in the whole entire world? I would never. That's ridiculous. That's outrageous. I mean, it's just crazy. I'm flabbergasted that anybody would ever ask me, Jordan Edis, did you kill Charlie, your best friend? Oh, no, I didn't. I mean, there is someone who I have in mind who would definitely have it out for Charlie. Like, 100%. Like, want to, you know, you know, you know. Like, you know, you know, you know. Like, I know somebody who wants to do that. But it's not me. I would never. I'm not crazy. I'm not a psycho. At all. Your crazy is my normal, ordinary. But you're crazy, 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 crazy. Like having a bad day crazy, like a horrible day crazy, that you would think of killing Charlie crazy? It's out of this world to me. I would never. I mean, there's somebody who would. Who? But I can't say. Why not? Because... They say if I say, I get in trouble. Like, serious trouble. Like, I end up like Charlie. Not missing. I'd be dead. Charlie is dead. That's exactly my point. The person who told me that killed Charlie. Amanda Lynn. <gasps> How do you know? Detective Tyler Prince already figured out the case. I'm just interviewing you because he thinks it was both of you. Both of us? Amanda is a psycho. I am crazy, but not psycho. I mean, I could help with the investigations because unlike Tyler, I'd be able to say some actual facts. I mean, I would never, ever work with Amanda what's her name Amanda who's it's what's it's I don't care she's crazy and not crazy like Jordan Yoon is crazy out of this world crazy but something's seriously messed up in her head I don't know why Tyler would ever think that I would work with him after all I told him after all these Stuff I told him after everything I shared with him, all this information I knew, he thinks I work with her. I think it's hilarious. I think it's ridiculous. Jordan, that's just an inference. He doesn't actually know that you killed Charlie. He just thinks that you knew a little too much. What do you mean he doesn't know I killed Charlie? I didn't kill Charlie. So why would he ever know that? Because it's not true. He's making stupid inferences, making stupid accusations, making stupid conclusions over something he doesn't even know happened. So you know what? I'm done with this conversation. Jordan? Yes? How do you know so much about how Charlie went missing? Well... I mean, before his disappearance, I don't know when it was, what it was, why it was, but he whispered something to me. He whispered, wait, 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 I'm forgetting. I'm what? forgetting everything. No, 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 I remembered the day before when I told Tyler. I, I couldn't have forgotten, now I'm 
talking to an actual police member for critical information. What is wrong with me? Was it teacher appreciation? Well, how did you know that? Tyler sent me all of his interviews before I did this case. Well, why do you have to come to me if Tyler gives you everything since he's such a good detective? Well, Jordan Muniz could be a better detective. Jordan Muniz, case solver. I could be better than Tyler. I gave Tyler all that information because I'm a better detective and a better source. Tyler said that I'm partners with What's her name, Amanda? That's ridiculous. You can't be a detective making instances like that. A detective doesn't solve the case until he solves the case. And he hasn't solved the case. So why is he trying to solve the case if he hasn't solved it yet? I mean, if I was detecting some case, you know what I would say? I would say, I think, not I know. I think this happened and prove my evidence and then I would talk to the person who I think did it instead of just telling people about God knows what about what I did but I didn't do anything because I didn't kill Charlie because I'm innocent and I've never worked with Amanda Lyndon Hooper I'm innocent okay I don't know how many times I have to say it you think I killed him? I didn't kill him. Oh my goodness. This is going like this is gonna go on my permanent record and then I won't be able to go to the college of my dreams and then I'll be a failure and I'll be sitting in jail rotting and once I get out I'd have to retake school all over again. I'd have to apply for college and then and then I'd get rejected because I have a criminal record and then you know what? You know what? I would end up on the streets. Oh my goodness, I would end up on the streets and I wouldn't have any education whatsoever. And you know what? You know what's even scarier? What? Charlie isn't with me to support me because I'm sitting there on the side of the street asking for coins because I was said I was guilty. When I'm not. Jordan. That life. I'm smart. I can go places. I'm not like you. Jordan, this isn't going on your criminal record unless you're proven guilty. Well, I'm not. You're making it seem like I'm guilty. I don't know. Maybe he's lying in a ditch. Or maybe he's lying on the side of the street. Or maybe he's lying in a forest. We never know. And we'll never know if you have that Tyler person making... Stupid accusations when he's not even sending out a search party to go find him. Jordan. Yes. Just between me and you, I think you're telling the truth. I think you're not guilty, okay? Thank you. Well, you know what? I wish you'd change that I think statement to an I know statement because it would make me seem less of a threat to humanity when I'm not. And you know what's even crazier? The phrase I think says that you're on the verge of wondering if you are right or if I am wrong. But right now I'm right. You're wrong. I know I'm innocent. And you should know too. And Tyler should know too. You know how many times he's interviewed me? Ten times. Maybe even twelve. Maybe even 200. You never know with Tyler. He could pop up right now and be like, Hey, Jordan, I think you're guilty. Let me arrest you. Jordan. Yes. Tyler has only interviewed you three times. And I think you're free to go now if you want to. Free to go? You think I'm free to go? If yeah. I'm Oh, then why didn't you let me go a while ago? It's because you don't think I'm free to go. You said, I think you're free to go. You didn't say, I know you're free to go. I'm not free to go because probably next week, Tyler will be walking in. Hey, Jordan, time for another conversation. Time for another interrogation. Time for you to tell me this, that, and the third, which I already told him two weeks ago. It's ridiculous. There's no reason I should be 
back and forth between these conversations, but I'm not guilty. And until you find proper evidence that tells me I did something that I don't want to hear. It. And trust me, Tyler won't be getting any of that evidence because he's stuck there trying to figure out whether me or Amanda are the sidekicks, whether Amanda's my boss or I'm his, her sidekick, whether I'm the boss and Amanda's the sidekick, or whether which one buried Charlie first. I don't know. Not me, because I've never worked with Amanda in my life, and I never, ever, ever will. So I think it's ridiculous that even Tyler would let that pop into his brain and say, Jordan Eunice is guilty. Jordan Eunice is not innocent. Jordan Eunice is very suspicious, but I'm not. I'm just smart. Like, really smart. Like, really, really smart. Smarter than you, smarter than Tyler, smarter than Charlie, and smarter than Amanda. And I quote that. I'm smarter than Charlie, and I always will be, and that's why Charlie's second is, and I'm not. Uh, Jordan, the only reason why you've been here so long is because you keep talking and dragging it on. Well, I'm sorry for dragging you just like I dragged... What's his name? Just like I dragged Charlie into a ditch. So you say, so Tyler says, since you guys think I'm a murderer, but I am just Jordan Nevis. I just go about my day doing who's it, what's it and just be crazy because what everybody thinks I am. Everybody thinks I'm crazy. So you know what? I am. Are you happy? Are you happy? Do you want me to say I killed Charlie? Because you know what? I say it doesn't mean it's true. I think I killed Charlie because maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. You'll never know because I said I think. I didn't say I know because none of you guys know what I did and I didn't do anything. So there's no reason for you guys to say I think and if you say I think that means I know that you don't no. And Tyler doesn't know. I know. You don't know. I know. Charlie. And until you guys give me proper evidence, I'm not telling you anything. Fine with me. Bye. Jordan was being really, like, I don't know. She was just talking a lot with the police. Like, she is definitely not innocent because someone who actually like, killed him would I don't think they would be, like, that desperate to say they're not guilty. So, I don't think it is Jordan. Now, the police are going to talk to Amanda. State your name, age, and occupation. I'm Amanda Lynn, 13 years old and a student. Did you kill Charlie Squash? Yes. Mr. Anderson and I were planning on killing him for a month. Ever since he got caught by Donna, he needed an accomplice to be in his alibi. Do you, so, do you plead guilty to your crimes? Yes. Okay. Well, guys, Amanda's in jail now. Um, so, that's the end of the Charlie Squash case. Mr. Anderson and Amanda killed Charlie. Um, I hope you guys like. I hope you guys liked watching me uh, solve this case a little further. Uh, bye.